The 1970 Toyota Celica 1600 GT in race configuration by Hasegawa. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again Toyota lovers and race car fans. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies unboxing video where today we are going to be looking at a Hasegawa kit and this is the 1970 Toyota Celica 1600 GT in the race configuration. Now this is an amazing kit. I actually do have one for sale on my Monster Hobbies webpage. So check that out www.monster-hobbies.ca in the model car section under Toyota. This is a cool kit because you can actually, you don't need to build this in race configuration. These parts all come separate, the flared fenders and whatnot. And there's another surprise in there too because it also has right and left hand dashboards. So you could build this as a Japanese race car or you could build it as an American street race car or an American stock Celica or Japanese one. <laughs> However you want to do it, this kit is amazing. Oh, I'm going to put it down though because it's in such a huge box. So if you love these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because every time I make a new model car video, I want you to see it first. I don't want anyone else to see it, just you. <laughs> My Monster Hobbies model car fans. Alright, so anyway, without further ado, let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. The Japanese cars really started to make a name for themselves in the 1960s and 70s. And here's one of the most popular cars of the 1970s, which was, of course, the Toyota Celica 1600 GT. And today we have a special treat, as this is the race configuration of the car made by Hasegawa. So this box is quite different to the North American size boxes. It is longer this way and wider. This kit is a 124 scale kit. And as we turn the box up, you can see it's not too much excitement going on here. The end looks like anything else. And here we get the side view of the car. And that's pretty much it. So in our race edition here, as you can see, it's got these nice, nice fender flares, which we would now call as ground effects but I don't think they actually had that term in 1970. There's the Japanese sport mirrors, which are mounted way out on the fenders, and you got the spoiler in the back. Now, I actually almost had the opportunity to get one of these cars, without all the flares, of course, a stock version, from a friend of mine, but uh, I turned it down because the car was so rusty that the door wasn't actually curved in. It had rusted and went straight down because <laughs> it popped apart <laughs> so uh, yeah and there was a lot of rust it was a British Columbia car and Japanese steel didn't quite work so well near salt water of course okay so let's open up the lid on this this is historic car series number 16 apparently and here is the Hasegawa instructions now I'll just move this off to the side we've got our glass in here as well as uh, rubber tires inside the same bag. There's our decal sheet with a lot of different number options, which is cool. Here's our chrome, my favorite part of all the model kits. And now it's molded in black and white. So there's a lot going on. Actually, this is quite cool because you can build this as a Japanese car with the right-hand drive or the North American version with the left-hand drive or vice versa. <laughs> Actually, I had to think about that for a minute. Okay, and um, now there's our race components, and there's the stock components. Ah, here it is. Okay, so you see right and left hand side dashboards. We'll get into this a little more in detail in a few minutes. There's our side panels molded separately, so you get all that nice detail in there. And then we've got the proper pedals instead of like the AMT kits where you have a standard with an automatic on the interior and your pedals. There's the race wheels, which are deep dish. Of course, the exhaust pipe and everything. Here's our body fender flares. That's that ground effects kit. And then we have another set of wheels here as well, which are uh, different 
type of rally type wheels. Now here's our body. So if you don't want to build this thing as a race version, you can also build it stock. And for America or Japan. So it's really quite an involved kit. So if you actually had one of these growing up as a real car, this is a golden grady for, uh, for you to have now as a model. So again, lots of neat suspension components and everything. So let me clear all this out of the way and we'll look at everything separately, starting with the instructions. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for a great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, found on YouTube, and I'll leave the link in the description below. And here we have our instructions for the Toyota Celica 1600 GT in race configuration. And of course you can see the nicely built up model kit. Now what's also cool about this is it's in Japanese as well as in English, of course being Hasegawa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this out and leave it in the description down below so you can read everything that's going on in here. And uh, we also have our paint code callouts, which I do believe would be Tamiya paints, or maybe even, um, oh, what are they called? Hasseg or No, I do believe they're Tamiya. I, there's another, oh, Gunzi Sanyo. <laughs> Could be those colors as well. I had to remember what that was. Okay, so let's zoom on back. And now this is a quite a big instruction sheet. Of course, it flips out all over the place. Flips into a lot of panels. And then it's double-sided. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in to the panels we want to see. And we'll view this thing a little more uh, easier, you know? So we get started right away with our interior here. And I've actually written down the colors. And there is a bit of mixture. So it says 20% silver plus 33% flat black to give you this sort of metallic flat black color. Anyway, uh, I won't get too deep into this. But there's our interior going together. They call it the cockpit. <laughs> there's our center console, shift knob, and the handbrake. And then here, there's actually a decal that goes on the top of the shifter knob. And it shows you which direction this should be facing. So pretty cool. And I'll just uh, slide this down here into our next panel. Ooh. So here we get our um, interior going together. So there's our rear seats and the two racing seats. And then we have our interior door panels right and left, as well as the foot pedals. Now, uh, there's our foot pedals here. And if you want the American style, and it doesn't really show this too much in the instructions, I, I don't think it. We'll see in a minute. But this is for the Japanese over here. And if you want it, the American, you just there's two notches in here. So you just move your pedals over and glue them on this side for the American version. And then, of course, it gives us all our paint codes as we go through on those interior panels. Next up, we have our dashboard. So again, we've got our two different steering wheels. It's your choice as to which you want to use. Our steering column and our dashboard. Now remember, you also have the mirrored dashboard for the American version. And uh, this is showing the Japanese. I guess also Australia is running this way too. So there's that. And then here's our dashboard with all the little... Yeah, there's decals all going in here for your gauges. And then it shows the two different type of steering wheels here. And now that we got the cockpit out of the way, here's our front suspension. And there we've got, oh, you actually glue the pin in here for your axles. And uh, there it is on the springs, McPherson struts. 
So they're all going in. And then there's your front uh, lower arms, your steering linkage, and then your exhaust pipe. And you're actually putting in the end tip into your mufflers. So that's pretty cool. And your radiator is in there as well. And here we have our rear axle going together as well as a drive shaft, which is interesting because the drive shaft comes in and it's got the front of the um, axle sitting in there, our differential actually. So this all goes together and then we, here we have a couple of little radius rods as well as shock absorbers and the springs. And what's nice about this is I actually had a 1972 Toyota Corolla and underneath this is quite the same, except mine didn't have the um, coil springs. Mine had leaf springs on it, but basically the same type of suspension. And in here we have our cockpit getting together with our chassis, and then all our wheels will squish in into place. Now what's kind of cool is I do believe that there is sort of a neoprene type squishy thing that you shove in here and then it squeezes onto the axle, so you don't need glue it will actually hold it in place. And then we've got our nice soft tires, which we'll look at when we investigate our parts. And then here's our wheels, and it tells you to paint the outer ring silver and the inside steel. So this will look quite nice once you get it all together. Panel 7 is showing you how to get your body all prepped up. And here it's showing um, to put in some glue in there. Oh no, sorry. Open up these holes here. Those will be for your windshield wipers. And then with this it's saying to remove your script and your trunk lid button. And then what's this here? Fill up these holes that are in the side for your side marker lamps. So you're preparing this for race day. And then the final bit of that preparation is to put on your rear spoiler your rear fender flares and front fender flares, as well as your front spoiler. So then once all this is on, you're ready to race. Panel 9 shows all your detail going in. This one does have separate headlights, so remember that it is a waffle pattern, and you want to go north and south, and not like at a 45 degree angle. And what's going on here? It looks like all our little side marker lights and other fin finicky details. You have the option of putting in a grill blank, either, well, there is a grill blank, so you have either F1 or G5, and then there's all your little side marker lights and other little goodies going in the front. And here's the final completion of that. So there's your sport mirrors going way up here on their front fenders, and then some, oh, those are your vents going into the hood, and then what's going on here, a front bumper and the little oh there's front bumper doesn't really say what this is but that goes in there too i guess these are blanks for the front i don't know figure it out later there's your window and your mirrors and your windshield wipers now across the back you have all these little vent details and whatnot that glue in around the windows and these would be your door handles going in then your rear tail lights and bumper and all the groovy parts that are going into here. And there's a lot on this, just like on the real car. And our final assembly step shows our completed body going onto the chassis and interior. Now one thing that I noticed about this kit is it doesn't actually have a complete motor sitting in here. But, you know, it is what it is. Now the rest of our instruction sheet shows all the decal locations and different things that are going on here and of course painting in the silver and all the rest there's the top view of the car the right either right hand and left hand or the other way around <laughs> and then our front end and our back end and then here's all our parts and the little grayed out areas are the parts that you do not use which of course are the stock components and the right and left hand side for uh, the American and the Japanese. Oh, and I didn't notice this, but there's right and left hand side windshield wiper blades as well. So sort of one of those things you don't quite think about when you're thinking, oh yeah, this car gets converted to right hand drive and left hand drive, is that the windshield wipers, see here, are going to swing this way and this way. But on our cars, they're swinging this way and this way to the driver to clear his line of vision. So again, 
quite interesting. And that completes our look at our instruction sheets for our 1970 Toyota Celica from Hasegawa. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River Flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just gonna open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River Flood and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels and that of course is Repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now. Here we have our little Toyota Celica 1600 GT body. And this is quite a smaller car compared to the other cars we've seen so far from the USA in our 1970 car review and unboxing videos. This is our last unboxing video for 1970 and then after this we get into 1971 cars. Uh, the excitement. <laughs> okay so we've got our little script on here and the slot for our door handle and the button. Those are little bits you fill unless you're going to build this thing stock which I'm still debating. The hood of course is sealed up but there is seam lines and some old marks and numbers in here which you can of course scrape out and uh, make look really nice. And what else? Not too much on flash. And there are some uh, seam lines coming out here which we're going to have to clear up with the hobby blade. But overall as far as I remember this thing looks really accurate to the actual real model. And of course we've got some razor sharp seam lines in here which we can again sand down. But overall, I'll give this thing an A+. So I thought I would show the white components first and then we'll switch into the black components. Um, here's the fender flares that we have as well as the front chin spoiler and this piece which I do believe is another racing blank for the front end. There's our roll bar and some of the braces for it. Our differential which looks really flat. <laughs> okay and then we've got these really cool really deep ra um, yeah these are the racing wheels and then there's our rear spoiler. So just for a little bit of fun there's our body again. Just kind of curious. Yeah see how the fit is nice and it even cuts into that molding down below. I don't know how well you're gonna see that. But yeah this will match up nice and perfect once you glue it into shape. The nice thing about the Japanese kits of course is they are really precise in their fit and finish and that's why Ravel and AMT tried to copy them in the 90s because they were quite the, uh, the Japanese kits were leading the market actually in precision. But yeah look at how nice those wheels are and again the big holes but there's some little neoprene thing that will pop in there to keep them on your car. So again quite a quite nice work and detailing from Hasegawa. Now we actually have five black parts trees so I'm gonna show the first two which are all our suspension and undercarriage drive pieces and whatnot. So here you can see our chassis is molded in place on a parts tree. Unlike the AMT kits and Ravel which have the chassis uh, clipped off of the parts tree. You can see the nice Toyota engine in here from underneath. The long transmissions that they have and very skinny. So you're going to have to paint this. I do believe they're aluminum if I remember correctly which is going to be an interesting treat. There is some flash in here which will have to of course be sanded down but overall I mean there's hardly anything on there for flash. There's our front suspension and um, the other bits. Now the Toyota was patterned after American cars 
So you'll notice that the front suspension is pretty similar to that, although the American guards didn't use McPherson struts. But overall, it's about the same. This is a unibody car. You can see the frame rails come up here, stop, and then we've got the outer frame, and then it goes back into a little frame in here. Subframes is what they're called. Turning it over. No, um, mold marks up in here, so again, check them for clearance with the interior or the cockpit, and then scrape accordingly. Always remember to try to have those nice flat and flush. So actually got to move that out of the way for a minute. There's our stock wheels, or actually a race alternative two. A little bit of flash in between the spokes here, but nothing that you can't handle with the number 16 hobby blade. So I'll move these back down. And then we'll take a look at our interior parts. And here we have our interior components. And there's a lot going on, because remember there's a right and left hand side instrument panel. There's also the race instrument panel here, which will probably be just a flat piece of aluminum put over the stock gauges. Okay, so let's start over here. And I'll just move these two out of the way. So here we have our floor pans, which are nice and smooth. No mold marks on the inside on the, well, I guess carpet, <laughs> uh, which is good. All the mold marks are underneath like they should be, so that you can't see where they are. And then there's our interior panels, which gives you the nice paddle-style door hinges for getting in and out. There's one of the dashboards. So this would be the Japanese, Australian, English style dashboard. There are no gauges in here. It's nice and flat. So like no raised uh, instrument panels or numbers or needles or anything like that. So you can put those decals right in there. There's a Hasegawa name on a thing. So if you want to display that on your diorama or whatever. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't know what I'm doing. Okay, like I was saying, there's the two notches. Buenos notches. There and there. Uh, there, you can see them a little bit. And that's for if you want the pedals on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. So now let's just move this up. This is our rally stuff here. Rally it is. Okay, there's our instrument plug. For instrument panel. It'd be nice if they actually printed it in reverse on the other side so you could switch it for uh, American. And then there's the front grill. I guess America, Canada, and Mexico is all on the same side of the street. There's our uh, racing seats and steering wheel. So again, nice detail. Mold marks on the back of the seat, so you have to cross sand those out and smooth it all up. And then here we have the stock components with our American style dashboard um, on the left hand side of the car, of course. Our steering wheel, there's an additional uh, insert right there. It's very nice stuff. I always liked how small the cars were and how they had to mold the seats to fit around the wheel arches <laughs> uh, and the wheel wells. Okay, so again, like I was saying, these dashboards perfectly mirror each other, so you've got your choice of either right-hand side or left-hand side. So again, some pretty cool stuff going on here. And I'm sure you can have fun building this either stock or as a race version, or as sort of a combination of both. And next up we have our chrome, which is my favorite components. There's our grill. You can see how tiny this is. Our rear bumper and front bumpers. And that's for stock. And then we've got our door handles here for the exterior, as well as right and left hand side windshield wipers, the little sail panel pieces, and our grills for our hood. And what else? We got all kinds of little mirrors and shifters and things in there. Overall, really nice. A couple little mold marks in your fender. Yeah, fenders here. So again, scrape them out. Not sure what these are. Oh, they're protectors for one little, that's your exhaust, your muffler tailpipe thing. But they've got these little things beside it just to protect it from breaking. It's very nicely done. So again, not much chrome, but hey, it's a race car. 
Next up we have our glass components, and boy, there's a lot of glass on here. The uh, Those are the tail lamps, which of course have to be painted red. But all your headlights and so much stuff. Side marker lights. Uh, yeah, just a lot. And there's our glass here as well, so we'll just bring this up nice and clean. It was in a bag, which again, I always like because this doesn't get scratched up. Look, it's even got the defroster uh, wires in the back window here. So again, you'll have to get underneath here and carefully paint them brown. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I would not try to attempt that. <laughs> I've been building models for years and I've won awards for model building and that trying to paint those on the inside scares me to death, so forget it. <laughs> and I'm an expert. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, there's mold marks in there which, again, you can clear out. What's kind of nice about this is they've got the runners along the sides, but unlike the uh, American, like, AMT-style glass that we saw, these don't really affect if you're going to turn the car over and look at the headliner, because they're not, like, there and there like they are on the American cars. These ones are right around the perimeter, which is how they should have been designed in the first place. Anyway, there's all our little headlights and everything. So make sure, again, that's that waffle pattern goes north and south, not like a 45 degree angle or something weird. So again, very nice work on the glass for this model kit. So now we've got the rubber hitting the road and we've got these nice slicks, which are the perfect style of racing tire. Now there is some seam line going up around the center of this, so you might want to spin this in your wheel spinner. Although, these are real squishy tires. These are like slot car rubbers. So, yeah, they're quite nice. Again, nothing really to show you for tread. But still, I mean, these could be Dunlops or whatever. Or Yokohama tires, I guess would be better. And there's those little neoprene things I was telling you about. They're little O-rings that will pop into the back of those wheels and onto your axles and, of course, make everything spin nice. So there's your tires. Finally, we get our decal sheet. And there's a lot going on here. We've got number 67, 68, and 69, which I'm glad there's no number 70, because <laughs> I hate when they have the number that's the exact match of the year of the car. It's It just seems cheap to me, you know? Like, um, yeah. Anyway, kind of like a rip-off or something. I don't know. Anyway, there's the uh, Celica GT license plates. These, of course, are for your showroom. And then look at all these little tiny gauges and scripts and everything. You're going to have a lot of fun putting these on your car, on the dashboard. There's even, looks like one for the steering wheel. And then these look like they're hood pin uh, decals. So, yeah, lots of crazy stuff going on there but it'll make your model kit look really good. And again, if you want to replace the license plates and have like something, you know, from Iowa or whatever, then um, you can easily do that. So there's our decals. And that completes our look at the 1970 Toyota Celica GT 1600 in race configuration. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these model kits, I have one currently available over at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And I want to ask you a simple question. If you were to get one of these kits, maybe from me, maybe from someone else, um, how would you build it? Would you build it as the race configuration on the top of the box? Or would you build it as the stock version that you could easily build with the parts inside? And if so, would you build it as right-hand or left-hand drive? Please let us know down in the comments below. And if you have built one of these, share it with us on our Facebook page. We would love to see your work. And now let's blow up this taco stand and get to the end of our video. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great video of unboxing of this amazing model kit. And how are you going to build it if you get one of these? Stock, street? Japanese or American style? Let us know in the comments down below. Oh, what color are you going to paint it too? That's another great question. Oh, -ho. <laughs> let us know down in the comments below. 
And uh, what else can I say? If you want to get one of these great kits, check us out, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video on your way out, and pound that notification bell, because I'm serious. I want you to see our next video. So if you pound it, YouTube will let you know when it's going to come out, and then you just got to click it. And let me know if you are the first one to see it in the comments down below. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you at the racetrack. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.